Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Kansas City Royals versus the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Royals today is Dave Moorhead, whose record is 12 and 13 with a 5-13 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today is Marty Patton, whose record is 9 and 13 with a 4-69 ERA. Well, we won a game yesterday that <laughs> was so important. Um, we get out of uh, the Orioles series with a 2-2 two and two record, um, which I think is exactly what we needed in order to keep pace with Oakland. Uh, we're going to face them at the end of the week here. Uh, we have three games now against the Royals, which we should have no trouble beating in theory. Uh, if we could sweep them, we would be in a really great place to head to play the A's the last time of the season, we'll see the A's. And if we can win two out of three in Oaktown, then, I mean, I think we might actually have a chance. Um, and it wouldn't have been possible, I don't think, if we hadn't pulled this game out yesterday. We had three errors in the first two innings. Baltimore went up 4 nothing. Uh, we did get a run on a wild pitch or a pass ball or some shit in like the fourth inning uh, to make it four to one. And then all of a sudden we opened up a can on them, scoring five uh, in the sixth inning. And I'm like, okay, we're going to win. Like uh, Darren Johnson had a two run home run. Lou Pinella pinch hit, had a two run single. We went up six to four. And then we came right back and gave up two runs in the top of the seventh. And I thought, oh, you know, okay, maybe it's just not going to happen. But we had a sack fly in the bottom of the eighth inning, and, and uh, Marshall came in, shut him down. It was actually a really fun game of uh, despair and hope, and you know, we pulled it out in the end. Um, and we have a chance, so we're, we're still in it. Uh, and now we're going to play the Royals for three games here at home, and we should be able to. Uh, play them pretty closely. We have Marty Patton on the mound today. And the good news is we're getting Rich Rollins back tomorrow. I already put him on the bench. We sent Wayne Comer down, uh, a player that we like, uh, you know, but we already have so many outfielders, especially with Hegan and Pepitone being able to play in the outfield uh, as well as first base. I mean, there's no point in having six outfielders on the roster. Uh, so, uh, uh, so Comer went to AAA, and he'll be back in a week and a half when rosters expand. So let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. A little bit later on today, I'm going to upload a video. I'm going to be opening this uh, value pack of uh, 2022 Tops Series 1. Maybe a Julio Rodriguez rookie card in there. Maybe a Spencer, Spencer Torkelson for my Detroit Tigers. Uh, maybe his rookie card could be in there. Maybe an autograph. Maybe a piece of jersey. Uh, we'll find out. So the game is taking a, a moment here to load up. There we go. As we finally get to the pitcher's page. Any second now. Any second now. We do have also, don't forget, uh, on Monday, just two days away, we're going to have the uh, 1984 Detroit Tigers National League East preview uh, that will probably go up late on Monday evening. Uh, I am now here, of course, in, in Arizona. I am now on Pacific time, so I'm one hour further behind everyone on the East Coast, uh, just for reference purposes. Uh, so here's Marty Patton. We're back to a five-man rotation. He is still in the number one spot. All of our bullpen is available today after having uh, two righties unavailable. Um, yeah, so we have Patton on the mound. And here's our lineup versus Dave Moorhead. Patek's hit streak came to an end. He was listed as tired, so we took a chance and let him um, play yesterday and his hit streak was lost at 16 games. So we're going to give him a rest today. I've jumbled up the lineup a little bit, um, putting Tommy Agee at the top. So uh, we'll see how that works out for us today. 
Let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Kansas City Royals. Batting leadoff in right field is Pat Kelly. Batting second at third base is Joe Foy. Batting third, playing catcher, is Hawk Taylor. Batting cleanup in left field is Dave Nicholson. Batting fifth at first base is Mike Fiore. Batting sixth at second base is Jerry Adair. Batting seventh in center field is Scott Northey. Batting eighth at shortstop is Rich Severson. And batting ninth is the pitcher Dave Moorhead. Okay, here's Marty Patton. Let's take a look at his numbers. He is leading the team in uh, innings pitched now, making his 27th start of the season. He's 9-13 with a 4.69 ERA, 74 strikeouts in those 144 innings pitched. Opponents are betting 286 against him. He's got a complete game shutout this year. Uh, his fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Two-pitch pitcher. Neither one is particularly great at this point. Uh, the four-seamer is an 82. The curve is a 74. That's why he's getting hit around so much now. Uh, overall, he's rated a 79. The 26-year-old right-hander is arbitration eligible next year. He is coming off a victory versus California. He did not pitch well. He gave up four runs and seven hits in five innings. Only struck out one. Um, if you take a look at his hits here, uh, he has been giving the, up a lot of uh, singles and not so many home runs. How many total home runs has he given up this year? 15. That's reasonable for 27 starts. So, Okay, let's take a look at our defense today. Uh, we do have Jerry May behind the plate. So an upgrade there defensively over McNerty, but first and second uh, is still right at league average. Okay, here we go. Pat Kelly leading off versus Marty Patton. Right down the middle, and he strikes him out. All four seamers, but one curveball. And one down now. Here's Joe Foy. That's exactly how we want to start off the ball game. Ground ball up the middle from Joe Foy, and Sutherland makes the play. Two quick outs for Patton. That will leave it up to Hawk Taylor to get something going with two outs. Taylor does. He goes deep. Oppo Taco to right field. His sixth home run. Not bad for a backup catcher. And we were looking good there for two batters. <laughs> and then Patton got scorched. Dave Nicholson, the cleanup hitter, hits a ground ball to short. Play is made by Kessinger. And we're down 1 0 here in the first inning. Plenty of time to make that back. Batting leadoff today for the Pilots. And playing center field is Tommy Ag. Batting second in left field is Mike Hegan. Batting third at first base is Darren Johnson. Batting cleanup in right field is Joe Pepitone. Batting fifth and catching is Jerry May. Batting sixth at third base is Van Kelly. Batting 7th at 2nd base is Gary Sutherland. Batting 8th at shortstop is Don Kessinger. And batting ninth is the pitcher Marty Patton. Let's take a look here at Dave Moorhead. Making his 30th start. He's 12-13 and 13 with a 5-13 ERA. 147 strikeouts in 196 and 2 third innings. But he's also walked 120 batters. Uh, the opponent's batting average is 257. he He's got three complete games. His fastball tops out at 95 miles an hour, and that is his only good pitch. It is rated an 88. Overall, he's rated a 79. The 25-year-old right-hander is arbitration eligible at the end of the season. His numbers and stats here really align well with Marty Patton. Very similar. Look at his log. And you will see that he faced us on July 27th, and he took a loss. He gave up 12 hits uh, on eight runs. Youch. Four walks in there as well. So, let's see if we can't hang another big number on him here. Let's take a look at the defense for the Royals. Uh, below league average at shortstop, which is Severson, and left field, which is Nicholson. Um, and behind the plate with Hawk Taylor. What's Taylor's arm? 
a 75. So if we can get some of our speedy guys on, we might be able to steal a couple bases. Also, don't forget, uh, Tommy Harper is on the Royals. Remember, we traded uh, Tommy to the Royals. He's on the bench. I looked him up. He has one home run for them since coming over. Here is Tommy Ag leading off against Dave Moorhead. 1-1 one, one count to Ag. A ground ball to first. And an error by the first baseman, Fiore. Okay, now do we go right out of the box here? 76% chance. I think we have to send him. Um, it's early. I think we're going to score runs. So even if he is thrown out, which he should not be, but even if he is, we have time. Low fastball and AG steals second base. That is number 32 on the season. He's 32 for 39. So we have a runner in scoring position for Hegan. Hegan had a couple hits in yesterday's game. He's one for seven in his career versus Moorhead. A slow ground ball to short. AG will advance on that. That was a risky move. They're going to pull the infield in, as they should. All we want from Darren Johnson is a sack fly. I think anywhere in the outfield should score AG pretty easily. Let's see if he can't acquiesce. There we go. One will count. That'll get it done. A fly ball to center. AG will tag and score easily, and we're knotted up in one. On that error, we haven't even we don't even have a hit yet. Okay, two outs. Joe Pepitone up, giving him a spot start out there in right. And he strikes out. He is actually really struggling. His uh, batting average for the Pilots is down to like 235, I think. Okay, we go to the top of the second inning. Mike Fiore leading off against Marty Patton. Fiore rips it right at Darren Johnson. Scoops it and steps on the bag. One out. Here's Jerry Adair. He's the everyday second baseman now for them. Flying out to a right center field. It was Billy Parker? No, Billy Harper? Um, I can't think of his name. Billy Taylor. And they sent him down to the minors. So I'm sure he'll come back up. Two down. Here's Scott Northy. And Northy strikes out. Swinging. We go to the bottom of the second inning. We got Jerry May leading off. We're giving uh, McNurtney a day off today. He started his 100th game, McNurtney did, behind the plate this year. That's more than I would have ever thought we would get from him. May strikes out. Kelly strikes out. 3Ks for Moorhead. Will he strike out the side with Sutherland? That's a tall task. Sutherland only has 11 strikeouts this year and well over 300 plate appearances. Here we go. Sutherland. Oh, no. Full count. And he slams it right back in the center field. But unfortunately, Northy will track it down. So we go to the top of the third with Rich Severson leading off. And then Moorhead followed by Kelly. Full count to Severson. That might fall in. It does. Oh, wait. Did it? Oh, yeah. It was actually trapped by the center fielder, A.G. So leadoff man is on. Here's Moorhead. we got to assume that uh, he will lay down a bunt here. So we'll pull the corners in and a balk. Okay. But we'll pull the, uh, I mean, now Moorhead might be swinging. I don't know. He's a 111 hitter, so it's not like he can't get a hit. And he does. Unbelievable. A balk and then a pitcher doubles. Hey, you can mark that off on your baseball mogul card. That is a, um, that is a thing that is on there, the pitcher doubling. His fifth double this year. He has eight hits and five are doubles because that's all pitchers do in this game is get doubles. It's 2-1. to one. And uh, how much further do we let Marty Patton go? 
He walks Pat Kelly. There's nobody out. Here's Joe Foy, first and second. Popping it up on the infield. One out. That's going to bring up Taylor. Taylor, all he did was go deep in the first. That was his sixth home run. A comebacker to Patton. Can we get a double play out of it? Yes, we do. One, six, three, double play. Good job by Patton. Keeping the damage to a minimum. It's two to one. Going to the bottom of the third. Don Kessinger leading off. Kessinger. Ground ball. We have, we, we have no hits against Dave Moorhead. A pitcher with an ERA over five. Maybe Patton will get a double. No, of course not. He strikes out, as they all should. And we're back to Tommy Ag, who strikes out as well. So I don't think we're going to win this game. I mean, I think we've had all the indicators with the balk, the pitcher batting, not being able to hit at all against their pitcher, uh, who's a nobody and sucks. Uh, so I don't, I mean, we're only down a run, but we have to be smart about Marty Patton because we've said it over many of his other starts. He's really got to the point now where he can't pitch. I mean, this guy does not walk people. And he's walked two already through three innings. Um, yeah, I don't think he's got it. As Fiore flies out to the left. That one is catchable. Good job out there by our left fielder, Mike Keegan. Runner at first, one down. Here's Jerry Adair. That one might actually fall in. Yep. Got to pull the infield in. Scott Northey. Infield in. And he walks his third. What? He struck him out? That ball was so low and outside. Their batters are working. Uh, Patton, though, he's got 66 pitches. And um, I think we will actually walk uh, intentionally Severson to get to the pitcher. And maybe there's a wild pitch or a balk or a pass ball. But there's no way he's going to give up another hit to the pitcher. First pitch. Popping it up into foul ground on the first base side. There we go. So we get out of it. We're still down a run here. And we have very little hope right now as Mike Keegan leads off the inning. Line drive to left. Another out. We are being no hit by Dave Moorhead. We, there's no chance we're going to win this game. He struck out six. And Pepitone flies out to left. <laughs> Excuse me. Cold coffee. <coughs> oh, Lord. All right. Well, Patton's here in the fifth. I'm sorry. All right. Let's see what he can do here. Top of the lineup. They only have two lefties in the lineup. That's so weird. Pat Kelly popping it up. <coughs> Into the outfield grass, and it's dropped. An error, a pass ball, a balk. I mean, there's just no way we're going to win this ball game. Who knows if it's going to be caught. One down. Here's Hawk Taylor. A stolen base by Kelly. I did not see that coming. That gives him 30 on the year. 30 for 42. That's a pretty good ratio. Well, that is going to be the third run scored then. As Hawk Taylor's got a 1-0 count. And he steals third. We'll pull the infield in. Ground ball to short. Kelly's got a hold. Um, all right, we have to go over Nick. Go at Nicholson here. We can't walk him to get to Fiore. Fiore's got the most home runs 
in the lineup. I don't know if it's on the team or not. Here we go. First pitch. Oh, there's a fucking wild pitch. This game sucks so bad. We've hit every we've hit everything. We had the wild pitch, a pass ball, a balk, and we're in the fifth inning already. So this game yeah, this game was definitely over. Alright, well let's get it over with anyway. May strikes out for the second time. Moyad's got seven strikeouts and has yet to give up a hit. We have more errors than hits. Not anymore. Sutherland gets a base hit with two outs. This will this completely nullifies yesterday's win. Base hit the center. Leadoff man is on again. I guess we should have known when Hawk Taylor went deep <laughs> that the game was over. That well, that was probably the actual telltale sign. <clears throat> o2 count to Severson, popping it up, and the pitcher again. He's one for two with a double. Another wild pitch. Two wild pitches. How many wild pitches did he have coming into the game? He had two coming into the game. He's doubled his season total in wild pitches today. The pitcher will get a hit driving two runs. Or is it going to be an error? Well, we can't let Patton bat. Man, this game, I tell you. Um, all right. I guess we got to bring in Lou. Ground ball back to the pitcher. We are being blown away at home by a frickin' nobody. I guess we'll bring in Diego Segui. Um, I was looking at Segui because uh, he didn't play. He wasn't not eligible yesterday. He's already thrown 70 innings pitched. And if you look at his years in which he was used as a reliever, um, he's kind of already in that zone. So I don't know how much more this guy can go and be effective. The best thing that we can do for this guy is get to um, the September call-ups and then maybe not use him as much, but uh, we're going to throw him in the ball game right now. He has been really shaky. Yep, the old strikeout walk. Let's just keep it going. It's 4-1. to one. I'm just pushing the button now. So, Sagi gives up another run. I mean, I don't know what else we can do. Jerry Mays struck out twice today. I, just, I can't believe how little the ratings mean in this game.
I mean, and how many times in a year do you see the only run scored in the first and then it's shut out the rest of the way? I mean, that happens way too much in this game. It's like the game automatically calculates whatever the final score is going to be uh, in the first for the losing team. Nine strikeouts for Dave Moorhead. This guy is fucking Cy Young out there. Unbelievable bullshit, man. Oh, what a surprise. They hit her before the pitcher gets a hit. So now you got to make a call. We would have pinched it anyway. I guess we're bringing Don Bosch. At least maybe if he goes yard. Uh, this, yeah, maybe they'll give us a, a junk run here. We're going to the ninth. Uh, we'll bring in Skippy, simply because he hasn't um, pitched as many innings as um, Marshall. No, of course you can't get through three batters without walking anybody. Yep. He strikes out the side and walks three. This is the worst game ever invented by a human brain. Like, why don't you just put on the packaging, I'm sorry, I don't really care about baseball. All right. Well, we lose four to one. I mean, that's that gives us no hope. Um. Well, Oakland loses. So and so does Minnesota naturally. And Kansas City's on a four-game winning streak. So, and Boston's on a five-game winning streak. <laughs> And uh, San Diego, they won four in a row. No, they finally lose. Um, that would have been funny if they were all, all the last place teams were winning. Let's take a look here at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Yep, I don't care. And another retirement. Uh, yeah, uh, Mel Nelson. Never heard of him for the Cardinals retires. He did pitch in 68 and was kind of effective, but I don't know. Now he's going to go mow lawns. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Well, that, that's just the worst possible scenario there. I mean, I'm not giving player of the game to anybody. Um, if you can only get two freaking hits, uh, then uh, we don't deserve it. Patton takes the loss. He didn't even pitch the bat. We wa uh, what was we walked seven, and struck out nine. We had two wild pitches, a pass ball, and a balk, and the error, of course, by uh, Kessinger, who dropped a pop up that led to a run. Moorhead goes to thirteen and thirteen. He pitched nine scoreless innings because the one run that scored was a sack fly, but it was also because of the error. He struck out ten. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's going to do it. We'll come back tomorrow. Why not? Play game two. Until then, everyone, have a great day.